Hey everyone, I hope all of you are having an amazing day today and today I'm not building one diorama, I'm in fact building three miniature dioramas and they're all set on candles because I don't have an explanation for it. Enjoy! <laughs> So yes, if I wanted to try and explain like why did I build dioramas on candles, I think I just had the idea one time and then it just didn't leave me. Like I don't think I've ever seen dioramas being built on candles, like this is not the result of a Pinterest search or anything. But anyway, so lore wise this diorama kind of ties in again into my fancy world because of course everything ties into the fancy world that I've been building but it basically ties into the I call it just the fire islands it's basically the region which I haven't really thought about that much so it has the most generic name possible but it's basically an island archipelago that is just it's volcanoes. Like, I think every fantasy setting has that one place that's just either one huge volcano or just a whole bunch of like a hundred volcanoes over this very small area. I think every fantasy setting has at least one place that's kind of similar to that. And I'm not original, so I also have one of those places. Although when it came to this diorama, usually the like setup is what takes a lot of time. I mean, with the crystal ball that took quite a long time with the boat but here are the candles I mean they're basically just giant tubes but I had to have something to kind of resemble the wick of a candle like I needed something that was very tall but not very broad kind of just resemble that wick because I want to still have it like somewhat be like a candle like I could just build dioramas on giant tubes but then where's the clickbaity title now I can say I've built dioramas on candles but <laughs> anyway so when it came to this diorama yeah building a miniature volcano is harder than it looks like I thought that this would be the easiest part like building just it's a small little hill with some lava or basically just solidified lava actually because I didn't want actually actual lava dripping down but uh, yeah it's not that easy <laughs> Like building a volcano, if you make it larger, it's going to be a lot easier. But Planet Zoo doesn't like building small things. And all of this diorama, like this entire build, is just a bit smaller than how I would usually build. Like all of it had to fit on top of these candles, so everything had to be kind of sized down, which is unnatural for me because I usually size things up. Up. Like it's a common thread throughout my builds that everything just gets bigger throughout the build. Here it was just like this is too large. Need to make it smaller. This doesn't look right. <laughs> but then that's also usually the case. Like builds usually start looking right like the last 20% of the build. The first 80% of building time it looks like a hot mess. And that's what this volcano also is. Like trying to because I wanted it to have the same kind of effect as I had done with the book where it slowly morphs into the object. So I wanted this volcano to kind of slowly fade into the candle or slowly morph into the candle. So like the what was once lava streams transformed into like the candle wax dripping down. And then I had to think... Oh, yeah, we're going from black, like, solidified lava. I know somebody in the comments is going to point out, actually, poison, solidified lava is called this. I'm a dumbass. I don't do my research before these episodes. I just like going off on a tangent and on rambling and such because that's where you get the true poison blade. So I know somebody is in the comments already like solidified lava is called this. I sometimes also just think I should just put my face cam on because I make the weirdest gestures when I'm making these voiceovers. But anyway, we're going from basically total black into pure baby white. That's not the right sport for it, I think. But basically, we're going from complete darkness into white and trying to sort of morph that into each other, like have it fade into one another. Yeah, that was going to be tricky. <laughs> I don't know if I completely made it work, but yeah. Also, I still have no idea where the pure baby white thing came from. <laughs> Again, this is why I love not doing any research before going into these voiceovers because 
the things that my brain comes up i know kane is probably screaming by now of like what the hell are you talking about poison <laughs> But anyway, back to the actual build. Because I don't really have that much lore when it comes to the Fire Islands. Because I know for sure I'm going to find or figure out a name for the Fire Islands. Because just calling someplace the Fire Islands is just... I mean, again, it's a very generic setting for like a fantasy world to have an area that's just basically the biggest selling point of the, that area being like volcanoes or volcanic activity. But I need to find a name. But anyway, the volcano, I wanted it to be really colorful. Like the Fire Islands, I you have basically two options in the fantasy setting when it comes to volcanoes. Either it's Sauron's bottle and it's just ash everywhere, everything is burned, everything is dead, or it's a jungle. I went for the latter setting where I wanted it to have kind of a similar cultural vibe as the book. And yes, I have forgotten the name of <laughs> that lab mess already because... Uh, I'm not good with names, this is why I write stuff down. But basically we're going from, well, cultural and architectural, we're going from Sulawesi with the Tonkanan architecture style, which I probably haven't remembered correctly, so apologies for that. But we're going from there to Bali by having, of course, this arch, or not this arch, this gateway or doorway, and... Here's one of the things about building small in Planet Zoo. It doesn't work. <laughs> At least not for me. Like one of the things that I struggle with is building small things. So having this, like normally this archway or this doorway would be twice the size if I had to build it just normal. But because it had to be smaller, because it had to fit on top of these candles. So this time I didn't make the object fit the diorama. I made the diorama fit the object, which is usually the other way around. But yeah, it was just like, I have one piece that I can use for all of the decoration and you will see which piece it is and it's a piece that I never usually use because it never usually fits anywhere but here it is and oh boy it's 80% of the build. Uh, also with these builds or with the book and now the candles it's one of the few times that I can use like the statue pieces from the Indian team and why aren't they completely flexi color? Like, I can't color the eyes or anything, so it always will have, like, the weird bright white eyes. But it's supposed to be, like, a solid stone thing, but it's the closest thing that I could get to what's usually above these doorways, which I think is probably the Ward of Evil something. Like, this is, again, I mentioned this in the book video, but because these are, like, kind of one-off builds, like, I try to make sure that I'm picking a different architectural style and all of that, or at least a different region of this fantasy world, which usually means different architecture style. It does also mean that I can't really do like full research or like long-term research, which means that there's just a lot of cultural things that are going to go beyond me and uh, will just fly out right over my head. Although I do, I keep saying this with every build, I do really like this because I, it's just building something different. Kayan al Bashar, Valhalla, it's all like comfort zone building, like I know what I'm doing and such. Here it's just like, huh, I have no idea which pieces to use. Like, this is actually a question that I have for you guys, for any of you guys who are Planet Zoo builders or anything like that. Am I the only one who has just like this very specific like group of pieces that I use, but then there's this whole other group of pieces that I will never use. Like there's a group of pieces that I know I can use everywhere and so I keep using them everywhere and then all of the other things is just like I can't see myself using that. Ever. And it's usually like, all of my builds are just made up of like a handful of pieces that I know to use. And the other, all of the other pieces, like when it comes to the packs, there's usually like 20, 30 pieces that I will use. And then the other like 120, I don't know how many pieces are in each pack. But the other 120 or so, or all the other pieces, I will just not use. Like, am I the only one who is like that, who just immediately scams through a pack, sees what pieces I use, and then it's like 20 to 10% of each pack that I actually use. 
unless it's plants. Like foliage, I will use everything and it's also a bad thing because you can really see in Cannabishar when I got witched back because you start seeing new plants and I forget to update like old places with the new plants. But yeah, when it comes to pieces, there's just this handful of pieces that I use and the other pieces I just leave on the sidelines because I think I'm just not comfortable using them. I, it's, I don't know. It's like I have some comfort pieces. <laughs> Of like, yeah, I know how to use this. Like with the Africa Pack blaster pieces became part of the catalog of pieces that I use. But uh, yeah, anyway, so back to the actual build. So this is supposed to be kind of like a temple thing. And yeah, there's a lot of statues that I couldn't actually get. Like a lot of times there will be like very ornate statues with these like archways or gateways or doorways but we don't have anything in game that's like a human statue which is kind of weird <laughs> because i think i've said this a million times but the amount of times that i've gone to a zoo and seen a statue of like a big donator or somebody who was important in the history of the zoo and Yet in Plant Zoo we have no statue of any like human being. Although to be frank I didn't, I don't want Frontier to actually give me those statues because uh, I don't like how the Plant Zoo peeps look or guests. It's why I usually don't build with guests on because they just, they destroy the immersion for me. Like I try to have Ken of Shabby kind of like not realistic but have like a certain style and then you have these play-doh looking people walking around also doesn't work if they're like wearing shorts and it's in the snow and the plants you guess just break all kinds of immersion like whatever project you have even if it's realistic if you have a zoo that's set in like the arctic or the tundra you're never going to see a guest who is actually appropriately clothed for that biome so yeah just start playing without guests. Uh, I know that I'm going to piss off all the franchise mode players. But I think even they can agree that the Planet Zoo guests just never quite fit in with whatever zoo you're building. Because, well, they fit in in a temperate zoo. If it's a desert zoo, they are a little bit overdressed, I would say. Or just, just not wearing the right clothing, I would say. And as soon as you get to a colder biome, it's just like, how the hell are you not freezing? But anyway, back to the actual build, which is like the third attempt of me trying to talk about the build. So this, I don't know if I'm building things correctly here. I found this shrine on Pinterest and I was just like, it's not too broad. It's not like filling up the entire candle, but it's high. So I was just like, yes. Also, you might have also seen that, um, yeah, I didn't lie when I said I used one piece and it kept being used because it worked. <laughs> and there's not really many pieces that look kind of like it. And I have no, like, if you color wood the right way, it looks like stone. So I used this actually in Tionopolis back when Tionopolis was still a thing. Like a lot of the statues in Tionopolis are wooden statues, but just call it correctly and it looks like marble or it looks like stone. Because you're probably not going to spend too close looking at it or too much time looking at it closely. So from far away it just looks like stone, even though these pieces are definitely wooden. And I did fancy up the actual... I think this would be where like the relic or just the holy part or religious part of the shrine would be. But I did kind of fancy it up because, I mean, it's a fantasy setting. So it's literally a temple right below a volcano. And the volcano only works when you look at it from like a perspective of like lower down because yeah this build is larger than the actual volcano but the volcano had to fit in <laughs> as well this this build just works if you look at it from certain angles but the immersion is kind of broken if you look at it from like top down because then the volcano is just tiny and the buildings are huge. But yeah, this was fun to build. And I was thinking of like putting flamingos or another animal like that. Maybe monkeys in with this. But I don't want to have like the visible gate. Like the, the vis not visitors, but the, you know, habitat gate. Because again, I love to have some kind of immersion. And 
not only the plans to guess, but also the gates usually break that immersion. So yeah, that's going to be basically all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, let me know if you guys also have the same thing as me where you have like a very set catalog of pieces that you constantly use and then there's like 500 other pieces that you just never touch because I know I'm definitely not the only one who is like that. But anyway, again, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, there is a like and subscribe button if you want to see more. And there's the notification button. But before that one starts working, I will start playing Plan 2 with guests. So, hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.